Hello, and for those of you who remember my previous video, you might remember the fact that I was looking at how to restore SQL Server Master Database using PowerShell and how quick and easy that was. Now, I was approached and I was told that that was a great video, but it doesn't work for them. And I kind of wanted to give feedback on that. Also to demonstrate what they're experiencing so that it's easy for the rest of you to follow along. So as an example, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this script. And I'm going to show you that in this server, we have both the SQL server and the agent service running. And if I go ahead and run that script, you'll see that I get a cannot stop SQL server message as an output. Now, the reason for this is because in this particular scenario, SQL server is actually using uh, the agent and the agent is dependent on the SQL server. So if I go ahead and clear that, the quick and easy way to fix this is I can just go to the line here where it says stop the SQL service and just add the parameter force. That's simple. Now, once it stops SQL server, we're also then going to have to uncomment a few other lines which I've added. And what these will do is go ahead and start the agent service because although we restart the SQL here, we didn't previously restart the agent because we weren't running the agent. So with those additional lines, we should be able to go ahead, restore our master database, start up our SQL server, and finally start up the agent service as well. And as you can see, that last line, I can then go ahead and refresh here and you can see all the services are functioning. And that's the small correction that's required to the script. For those of you who are interested, I've uploaded the new script, including all the comments, to GitHub. So as per previous video, you can find the GitHub repository where you can find this script. Alternatively, uh, I'm going to leave it on screen just for a second here or two if you want to quickly read out or see any changes. Again, I'm open to updates if you've got a better way because this is intended currently for only for a single instance. You might have multiple instances in your environment, in which case you could have other parameters that help you distinguish. And on that note, that's the end of this video.